Could geoengineering help save the planet? With global warming causing heat waves and rising sea levels, and potentially bringing about more devastating consequences, scientists are turning to climate engineering solutions to keep temperatures down. Geoengineering has two approaches to cool the planet, carbon dioxide removal and solar radiation management. Taking the direct air capture approach is Swiss company Climeworks, which uses several collectors to suck in air that contains carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is filtered and collected while other air molecules are returned to the atmosphere. A separate Harvard project, meanwhile, is working on dimming sunlight. The team plans to release limestone particles using a high-altitude balloon and then observe its effect on the stratosphere. The limestone spray will supposedly reflect solar radiation and slow greenhouse gas warming. It will also neutralize the acids that destroy the ozone, thus helping to restore that protective layer. Another technique aims to cool the seas and prevent coral bleaching by spraying salt generated from salt water to create more reflective clouds. Critics of geoengineering warn that such solutions are a temporary fix and run the risk of dealing more damage in the long run. It's definitely a radical step from reducing carbon emissions, which many believe is the more effective way to curb global warming. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Here are some of the ways we've been trying to fix climate change. A carbon dioxide sucking plant just opened in Zurich. The alarming rise in atmospheric carbon dioxide has led scientists to develop removal technologies to counter climate change. One such company in Switzerland has built a plant that directly removes this carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The Climeworks plant is located on top of a waste recovery facility, which provides it with heat and electricity. Air containing carbon dioxide and other molecules are blown through several carbon dioxide collectors. The plant currently has 18 such collectors, which are large boxes fitted with filters that capture more than 2,400 kilograms of carbon dioxide each day. Carbon dioxide binds to the amines in the filter, while other molecules pass through and return to the atmosphere. Once saturated, the filter is heated to 100 degrees Celsius, causing the carbon dioxide to unbind and be extracted. The filtration system can be reused several thousand times, allowing this process of removal and collection to be a continuous cycle. The carbon dioxide collected by the plant can be stored underground, used to help make renewable fuels and materials, or supplied to the food and beverage industry. Climeworks provides 900 tons of carbon dioxide annually to a nearby greenhouse, which has reportedly increased their crop yield by 20%. Climeworks also hopes to remove 1% of global carbon dioxide emissions by 2025. California introduces laws to restrict climate pollutants. The state of California has signed off on legislation to clamp down on greenhouse gas emissions, including black carbon from diesel trucks and methane gas from cow flatulence. Black carbon is a chemical emitted by diesel trucks that contributes to high rates of lung conditions, such as asthma. Under the new laws, black carbon emissions stemming from diesel trucks will be reduced by 50%. Dairy farmers have been instructed to reduce methane emissions from the state's 5.15 million cows by 40% by the year 2030. Farmers will receive funding from the state to invest in methane digesters, which will convert the pollutants from manure into energy that will be sold to electrical utilities. Opponents of the new laws argue that these reductions will hurt manufacturing in California and could force the industries out of state, with thousands of jobs threatened in the process. However, California Governor Jerry Brown insists these firm mandates will result in the development of better technologies and a boost for the economy. Carbon turned to stone in climate change breakthrough. Researchers in Iceland are hailing a potential game-changer for climate change after successfully converting carbon to rock. The project could help to reduce global warming by burying the waste CO2 produced by burning fossil fuels. Scientists at the Hultishedi geothermal power plant in Iceland have converted carbon dioxide into the volcanic rock basalt. Researchers pumped 230 tonnes of CO2 into rock 500 metres underground dissolving the gas in water to prevent it from escaping. 
more than 95% of the gas turned to stone within two years, speeding up a natural process that takes hundreds or thousands of years. A potential problem for the technique is that it requires 25 tonnes of water for every tonne of buried CO2. However, researchers say seawater can be used, which is abundant at coastal sites. The project is seen as an improvement on existing carbon capture and storage methods that store CO2 as a gas, causing concern about potential leaks. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Eating beans over meat could save the planet. A new study shows Americans should probably eat more beans than meat if the country wants to meet its emissions target. Cows emit methane due to a digestive process known as enteric fermentation. Most of the methane is released through belching, and only a small percentage is produced through flatulence. The massive amount of greenhouse gas produced by cows is comparable to the pollution produced by cars. Growing pulses is greatly beneficial to the environment as they are able to directly draw nitrogen from the atmosphere and convert it into nutrients. This means a reduction in the amount of fossil fuels used to produce nitrogen to create these nutrients. It is also much more water efficient to grow pulses than to raise cattle. Beans also provide similar nutrients to the human body as beef without the increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes, stroke, and colorectal cancer. Research shows changing the population's diet from beef to beans could help the U.S. meet its emissions target by 2020. Another study published in April recommended substituting meat with crickets and mealworms in order to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Would you give up your juicy steaks for beans and worms? Reducing carbon emissions could prevent more than 295,000 deaths in the U.S. The gradual effects of global warming have mostly failed to motivate many into making life-altering changes in the here and now. But what if we told you there's evidence that acting now might eliminate some pretty dire short-term consequences of climate change? According to a team of researchers from Duke University and the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies, slashing carbon emissions won't just reduce global warming, it could also prevent tens of thousands of premature deaths. A 2 degrees Celsius increase in atmospheric warming is usually considered the threshold at which the changes wrought by climate change, such as drought, flooding, declining fish populations, and the spread of tropical diseases, will become more than humans can handle. The two largest sources responsible for climate change in the United States are the transportation and energy sectors. In a research paper published in the journal Nature, researchers modeled what would happen if emissions in both sectors were significantly reduced by 2030. The study showed reduced emissions in both sectors would be enough to put the U.S. on the path of staying under the 2 degrees Celsius threshold. By 2030, under this cleaner energy scenario, as many as 175,000 premature deaths would be prevented in the U.S. and another 22,000 lives saved every year after. Under a cleaner transportation scenario, as many as 120,000 premature deaths in the U.S. were averted, with another 14,000 people saved each following year. The nationwide health benefits of reducing carbon emissions would total around $250 billion a year, which far exceeds the cost of implementing new, cleaner policies.